Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Dale of Merchants, which is a deck builder that's on Kickstarter right now, all about a bunch of adorable anthropomorphized animals who are trying to become the greatest merchant of the Dale in Dale of Merchants. And I'm doing a run through day so you can decide whether you want to back it or not. And before I get going, I have to set the game up. Now, in a two player game, which is what I'm going to be showing today, we take three, you know, it's, it's the number of players plus one, of the six decks of cards, and that's going to comprise the marketplace that we're going to be working in today. And so you've got the pandas the macaws, the raccoons, the squirrels, the ocelots, and the chameleons. Each one with their own special like kind of flavor and whatnot. And now to decide how I'm going to set this deck up, I'm going to throw caution to the wind and roll some dice. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's see what I get. The pandas, and the squirrels, and the raccoons. All right, that's pretty good. So that means today we will not be having the macaws. And the macaws are all about hand management, which as you might imagine is a big, big deal in a in a deck builder, but you know they let you draw three cards, keep one, put the other two back, uh, throw away a card. You know, basically thin your deck and draw a new card. You know, a lot of stuff about managing your hand. Uh, they may even make you know the, the, the delicious cookies. My favorite one makes your hand actually bigger instead of a normal hand size of five and get bigger. So, but we're not using them. The ocelots, these guys are crazy. They actually add a die with a zero, one, and two values on them, and they just add a bunch of crazy random chaos to the game. Like my, probably the coolest one is the blindfold, where you actually um, you know you, you hold a card and say, "What is the value of this card?" And another player has to guess correctly, and that determines the outcome. And just you know, and there's lots of dice rolling for how many cards you get to draw on a whole bunch of stuff. You put these guys in if you just want a lot of crazy, I mean, if you want to embrace the chaos. And let's see, we also are not using the chameleons, which honestly, I don't mind not having rolled these because this is the most complex deck. The rules even suggest in your first few games, don't play with them because all of their abilities are all about duplicating the abilities of other cards. So with the chameleons, you can get a lot of really complex combo chains. So they're out. And instead, today we will be playing with the pandas who are good at manipulating the the marketplace itself, the raccoons who steal from each other, these are going to make a little bit more interactive game, and the squirrels who help you be more effective at building your own merchant stall in the Dale. All right, so now we've got that. Every player gets one of each of the basic animals, and then the other basic animals will be out of the game because we're not playing a four player game. So that's the star deck. And then the rest of our deck is, let's see, it's going to be, that's three. So one, two, three, four, six, seven, seven, four, five, six, seven. Piles of junk, worthless merchandise, rubbish, I tell you. So that's the stuff we're going to try and be clearing out of our deck over the course of the game. Although without the macaws, it'll be a little bit tougher to do that because we don't have quite as much hand control. So that's, you know, my starting deck. Here's Jen's starting deck. So we've got three special powers, and of course, you know, if we were playing with more players, you would have had four special power cards and, and fewer junk cards, depending on how it plays. Anyway, so there's our starting decks, and now we take the rest of these cards, and we shuffle them up because this is going to be the marketplace. And in this game, early in the game, we are going to be, well, you know, in standard deck building style, buying games or buying cards from the marketplace. So that we can use their special powers throughout the game to be, you know, build our decks and become um, more powerful and you know specialize in certain things. But there's a second half of this game too, where we're also going to be kind of dismantling our deck. Not only are we going to be spending time building it up, but we're also going to be tearing our decks apart because as we get this merchandise, well, we we can use it early on to give ourselves certain advantages. But ultimately, remember, we're trying to become the best merchant ourselves, so we have to set up our own merchant stall in the Dale. So we're going to be taking cards out of our deck to basically build our merchant stall. So there's a really interesting, you know, series of decisions you make about when do you give up on this on a card that maybe has worked really well for you and done a lot of stuff, but you know, it's time to let it go so you can put it in your merchant stall because this game is effectively a race. The first player to build eight stacks, their merch, each player's merchant stall is composed of eight stacks of cards. The first person to get their eighth one built wins the game. So let's actually show a little bit about how that works. That's probably shuffled enough. Uh, maybe it's not, but you know it'll do. All right, so let's go on ahead. We set up the marketplace. We'll see how well I actually shuffled here. Uh, there's five cards available to buy. Oh, all right, four. That's actually a pretty good shuffle. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. Now, 
Uh, remember these dice, I gotta pull them back out. The real game, the full game, actually comes with a board that you buy all these from because whatever is in this spot, the spot closest to the draw pile, costs an extra four bucks. I'm just gonna use some dice to represent that. And this one costs three bucks, this one costs two bucks, this one costs one buck, and this one, th so this accordion costs five dollars. This special offer costs five plus one, so it costs six dollars. This acorn costs six dollars, this nuisance costs seven dollars, and this rotten food costs seven dollars. And of course when you buy something, other stuff slides down so it becomes cheaper over time. Let's just slide these up a little. Well, that's nah, probably fine. All right. So there we go. Alrighty, we're all set up. Ah, let's give ourselves a little bit more space and we are ready to play. I'll be the first player. We'll see how often we need... Oh, wait, no, we took the ocelots out, right? Yes, yeah, so we will not be needing the random ocelot die of crazy chaos. And so let me shuffle my starting deck a little bit more and let's get going. So uh, you start with a hand of five cards. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, now let's see what I got. So I've got, not surprisingly, some junk, because remember, uh, seven of my ten cards were junk, but I also got my raccoon and my panda. So now, on your turn, you get to do one action. And that action can either, or you have four choices. You can buy something from the market. And remember, I already told you how much these cost. The number in the top left of my cards, I have five purchasing power. So I could pay, I could pay, I can't buy the special offer because this costs six, but I could buy the accordion. In fact, right now, the accordion is the only thing I can afford if I want to buy something. But when I buy it, everything else will get cheaper. Now, so you can buy a card. You can use the technique of a card you already have in your hand. Like, I could use my raccoon's technique to do something. And the interesting thing is, when you use a technique that has this little plus, after you use the technique, you immediately get to do another action. You can use cards to build your stall. And remember, that's what the big, we're racing to build our stall. So I could sacrifice some of my animal cards. Generally speaking, you cannot use junk cards. The only thing junk cards are good for is to buy other stuff. You can't use junk to build your market, your own personal marketplace. You have to give up your special power animal cards. And then the last thing I can do is I could just rest. If I don't like this hand, I could discard any number of cards I want to be able to draw back up. Because the interesting thing is, this game gives you so much more hand control than your average deck builder. Because at the end of your turn, the cards I didn't use, I am not going to throw away. I'm going to keep them and just draw back up to five. So, if you see something really expensive and you can't afford it, well, you can build up over several turns to uh, buy. But anyway, so I've got five bucks, and you know what? Actually, surprisingly, everything out here is really expensive. While it would be worthwhile to maybe use this technique to... Um, well, actually, no. Right now is not a good time to do this. This technique of the, of the raccoons, I could swap my discard pile with my deck and then shuffle the new deck. Now, I have nothing in my discard pile right now. So, But if I had something really awesome in my discard pile I wanted to get out, the raccoon could swap things around so I could get it very quickly. But I don't want to do that right now. So I'm just going to spend all five of these to buy the only thing I can afford, an accordion. So I bought an accordion for five bucks. And now when you buy, cards don't go to your discard pile. They go immediately to your hand. So you've got it ready to go for the next round. So I've just bought this for five. Everything else just got a little bit cheaper. All right. Um, although, man, this is a crazy expensive start. Although the acorn costs five, the special offer costs five, this costs six, seven, and seven. All right. And so now at the end of my turn, I draw back up to my hand size of five. There's my squirrel, three, four, five. And my turn is done. Now it is Jen's turn. I haven't really shuffled her starting deck. Although at the beginning of the game, of course, you know, you're really, at the first few rounds, as is common for most deck builders, you're gonna be spending a lot of time buying stuff. All right, so anyway though, there we go. So Jen's got one, two, three, four, five. Boop, and let's see what she pulled. In her starting hand. All right, so, all right, so she's got a bunch of junk and her raccoon as well. And now, again, like me, if she wants to buy anything this turn, she's gonna have to use all five of these to buy either the special offer or the acorn. Now, special offer, this is a technique you can have for the rest of the game. Now, in, in the future, when you have this in your hand, you have five buying power. So that means you've got suddenly a lot of money you can spend on to get other stuff. Or you can use this card's technique, draw three cards from the market deck, place one in your hand and throw two away. So that's just, you know, draw three cards and you get one. And then the other two just go to the discard pile. So that's actually pretty cool. So let's go on ahead and do, or, or, sorry, but the acorn on the other hand, 
By the way, this is a Panda card. Remember, Panda cards let you manipulate the market. Squirrel cards help you build your own market, your own stall. So this uh, would cost me four plus one. It's technique, swap any card in any stall from a finished stack of any other players. By the way, everything I'm showing you about is prototype today. And so there are some little typos and whatnot. I've just had to take a pin to them to, to fix it up. So I can afford one of those. You know what? I don't think I'm going to be building my stall for a while. So as much as that acorn is nice, instead I'll spend all five to get the special offer. And then at the end of my turn, I draw back up. And there's my panda for five. And that was my first turn. Now it's Jen's turn again. So <clears throat> now, oh, and by the way, everything got cheaper. So now I've got some more options. I effectively have five, six, seven, eight, nine bucks I could spend. I can afford anything. And so I need to think about what do I want to buy? Wow. Okay. How well did I shuffle this? That's like four raccoon cards in a row. Come on, Rado. You can shuffle better than that. That's so much purple. Let's just try to have a little of uh, some other colors. Clearly, I should have done some pile shuffling or something like that just to mix them up a little bit more. I mean, I guess there are only three colors in here. It wasn't like that was statistically impossible or anything. But still, I just want to show you guys um, more variety, not just have nothing but purple attack raccoon cards. And I got a purple anyway. Okay. The universe has clearly decided this game should be all about attacking all the time. So what do I want to do? <clears throat> Interesting, I have no techniques here. So I've got advanced action. So really, I'm going to have to buy something this turn. So what do I want to buy? You know what? Actually, I think I'm going to hold on to this, this accordion for a while. Uh, because this, you know, to, 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 I am going to spend four bucks, um, throwing my, you know, discarding my squirrel card plus three junk to get this acorn because it only costs four bucks. Let's get discard. This goes in my hand and then I draw back up. So this is my last junk card, and so now I've got a shuffle. The interesting thing about this game is your decks stay, as a general rule, much smaller, much tighter. That you know, they never get quite as big as they do in other games. Because remember, one of the things I can be doing is discarding cards to build my own merchant stall. But I haven't done that yet. But I'll work on that in a bit. So got to draw back up, and hey, there's wow! It's all squirrel all the time. And so there's my hand for next turn, Jen's turn. So, and of course, everything got cheaper. I keep forgetting everything gets cheaper. Hey, finally, something that's not an attack card. So, Jen's got five, six, seven, eight, nine cards she could play. And let's see here. Hmm. Although the interesting thing about the panda, the panda special power is if you're going to use the panda to make a buy, even though it says it's a one, it's really a two. So, Jen's got five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten bucks she could spend. Um, although, uh, under usual circumstances, you can only buy one thing at a time. But with 10 bucks, Jen could afford any of these things. Let's see. And there's a lot of purple out here. I wonder if Jen just wants to start going down the route of attacking um, with some rotten food, which causes place a card from your hand on top of another player's deck. So, this is a way you can get rid of your junk by giving it to other people. Bad paint job. All their players randomly discard one card from their hand. Nuisance. Take one random <clears throat> card from any other player's hand and place it in your hand and then choose one of yours to give back. So, wow. Yeah, you know what? I mean, it seems like the universe is speaking to Jen. So let's go on ahead, and Jen will uh, spend. Let's see what she needs. She's gonna get one of these rotten food. This one costs four. This one costs five. She'll go on ahead and spend. She'll, this is one, two, three. Right. Yeah. So this is one, two, because the spe pain of special power. Three, four, to buy rotten food. And now, she kept this junk in her hand so that next turn she'll be able to use this to put the junk in my deck. And now at the end of her turn, she draws back up and she gets some junk. Well, not so much surprise. And now she's got to reshuffle again. And she gets another card. All right. So, that was Jen's second turn. And the, uh, the gauntlet has been cast. Jen is starting. Let's see. Now some more panda cards come out. So, back to me. Back to my turn. Now let's see here. Now then, so I've got, again, big buying potential. i got a lot of money here. Although, now the thing is, I haven't done it yet, but one of the core things you can do on a turn is you can sacrifice a card to start building your own stall. And uh, your stall is comprised of eight individual stacks of cards. The first stack of cards you ever you start creating has to have exactly a combined value of one. So, 
Uh, but you and also under normal circumstances, you cannot use junk to build your stall. You have to build your stall either with your animal helpers or with the fine merchandise you've bought. So if I wanted to, I could basically disc or remove from my deck this level one card, this squirrel, and this would become my first of eight stacks. The next stack I have to do has to have a value of two. So if I own like this thieving raccoons thing, this could be my second stack, and then my third stack. Well, I could have this three, or um, you know, I could combine a one. One and a two, or, or so on. So it's a, but you know, every time you do that, you're giving up special powers. And I don't want to do that right away, particularly because the squirrel special power is his special power is when you stack this card to play to your stall, you can use junk. So he's a really great way. Um, so I want to save him till maybe I'm making like my fourth stack where I need a total value of four. Him plus. Uh, plus three junk would be the value of four I would need to build, but that's going to come later. So I don't think I'm going to start building it. I'm just going to keep buying. Let's see here. But now the other thing is, when you build a stack, normally your stack has to be comprised of everything of the same color. So that's why if you can, you want to kind of specialize in colors. But now there are no more squirrels to buy, so I'm going to have to branch out. I saw Jen took a attack card, so I could buy an attack card as well, or I could buy more panda cards and try to get more control over my hand. And I think I'll stay away from the attacky type. We'll let Jen get all aggressive. I'm just going to come over here and get a panda card. So this one costs six. This one costs eight. Ooh, throw away any junk um, used to purchase this card. That's pretty cool. Although it'd be better to buy this later because I've only got two junk in my hand right now. But if I use them, I would be getting discarded. So I don't think I want to buy that right now. I want to wait until I have some more junk in my hand. So instead, I'll get this panda card, prepaid goods, which cost me six. And I will use my accordion plus my squirrel. So that's a total of six to buy this which is a technique, choose a card from the market and place it in your hand. You can just grab any card you want without having to spend time buying it. So, and now this got cheaper, it comes out, and now I've got to draw back up, and I draw another junk. So now, in the future, if this essential purchase doesn't go away, I could get rid of three junk cards when I buy it instead of two. So hopefully Jen isn't going to buy that, but let's see what happens. On Jen's turn, what is she going to do? All right, there's her deck. Well. Remember, Jen got some rotten food before, and so I think it's time to stop buying. Jen's going to use a Technique card, which means this turn she will not be able to buy. Instead, well, actually, that's not entirely true. If you play a Technique card that has a little plus, after you're done with the Technique, you can do another action. So let's have Jen start out by using rotten food. Technique. Place a card from your hand on top of any other player's deck. So Jen's playing this Technique. She'll take a Junk. And she gave it to me. So she thinned her deck out and hit mine. And now this gets discarded. But because there's a plus, Jen can do another action. Interestingly, Jen could do another technique right now. Draw three cards from the market deck, place one in her hand, and throw two away. Although you'll notice there's no plus, so this would end her technique chain. But she'd be able to get a card without buying. However, Jen's got seven, so she can afford to buy something. And you know what? I think Jen is going to start doubling down on raccoon cards because there's so many of them out here because you really do want to specialize in a given color because that helps you build your market later. So I think Jen's got five, six, seven to spend. What does she, does she want to get some more rotten food to get rid of more junk? Yeah, what the heck? She's going to do that. She's going to pay five for three plus one is four. So, and you don't get change, of course. Anyway, Jen goes into Jen's hand, so she's going to hit me with some more rotten food. She draws back up. And that was her turn. Everything gets cheaper. And now it's my turn again. And hey, the essential purchase is still there. So I'm going to go on ahead and buy this now to get rid of some, because I can see Jen's going to be dumping junk on me. So I want to get rid of it. So I'm going to make an essential purchase. Right now, that costs me six bucks. So I will buy it with my prepaid, prepaid food plus this. That's a total of six to buy this $6 card. And this junk gets removed from my hand entirely. It's just thrown into the junk pile. This goes in my hand. I draw back up. And you can see I'm starting to build a very strong deck that's very focused on Panda stuff. It might be time to start building my stall now. Meanwhile, back to Jen. She's going to continue to hit me with some more rotten food, which means she takes one of her junks and puts it in my deck. I'm getting rid of them, but junk, but she just keeps giving me more. And now she gets to do another action, but that only leaves her with three bucks. Although, she's not complaining because, what do you know? Bad paint job. Two plus one, she can afford this bad paint job. So she'll spend that three, and then she draws back up. So next time, she can hit me with a bad paint job. And there is her turn. All right. And back to me. Okay, so 
Now then, I uh, remember how I was saying, I think the time has come for me to start building my stalls. Remember, the first stack I add to my market stall has to have a combined value of one. So that means it's going to be this panda. I'm throwing this panda away, which is too bad because the panda, uh, remember, he's, he's very good because he's got a value of two. Even though he says he's a one for building my stall, for buying stuff because he's a good negotiator, he's a value of two, but he is gone. I've removed him from my deck and I have built my first of eight stacks, my value one stack. And that was my whole turn. So I draw back up and I got some more junk and that was it. And now it's Jen's turn again. And Jen, I think she's going to use this bad paint job, this technique. All other players, so first, although if she does that, she's losing two bucks. If she uses this technique and then she'll still get the new other action, she'll only have four bucks to spend. Oh, but her panda came out, so she really has five. Is there something she wants to buy for five? Well, you know what? She could just buy this nuisance card and just continue focusing on it. So Jen is going to do a bad paint job technique. All other players randomly discard one from their hands if possible. All right, so I've got to discard one randomly. I'm hoping it's not one of my valuable cards, but we'll see what happens. Dee 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 Boom! All right, it's a junk. I don't mind discarding junk, so that's not too terribly bad. Jen says, Urgh, junk. All right, well, she gave me a bunch of junk, so no surprise. All right, so now, uh, Jen, she did a paint job. She has a technique, bon she gets a bonus action, so now she can do one more action. Now, Jen, she could start building her own stall as well with her little guy, but she's not going to start building right now. She wants to build up her deck even bigger before she starts tearing it apart. So she's got one, two, three, four, five bucks to spend. She can't afford this, which costs six. She can afford prepaid goods, which lets her, you know, is the thing that gets her grab any card she wants from the market in the future. She can afford restock, throw all cards from the market and fill it back up. If you just don't see anything you like in the market, just dump it. And since it's a technique, you immediately get to go again. Or Ah, she could get a nuisance. What the heck, Jen? I mean, she's just she's going very aggressive. She just got herself another attack card, and now she fills back up. And so, ba -ba 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 -ba, da -da 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 -da. and so she's got to go back at five. Well, three, four, five. Okay, so Jen is going to make a nuisance of herself. Ouch. We'll see how that goes. But in the meantime, back to me. I've only got four cards. Okay. So now remember, the next stack I'm going to build has to have a total value of two. I don't have any value two cards, so I need to buy a value two card. And you know what? There's this restock out here right now. That might be a good thing to buy. This is going to cost me five. Let's go on ahead and buy that. Um, although, do I want to use some techniques first? I could use my new acorn to swap this card with any card from a finished stack in another player's stall. So this is a really good thing to have for later. If I need the perfect card, and I know Jen has used it to build her stall, I can use this acorn to get whatever I need from Jen's stalls later. So this is definitely I want, I want to hold on till late in the game. Prepaid goods. Choose a card from the market. I could just take any card I want. So if there was a, basically, if there was a card that was too expensive for me because my hand was small or whatever, I could get whatever I needed. But you know what? I can afford it right now. Um, although, you know, I think I'm going to use this. I'm going to use this as a technique to take whatever card I want because then I can keep these other cards in my hand. Right now, if I wanted to buy this, it would cost five. I'd have to get rid of my essential purchase or my acorn to, um, although when I make my, right, yeah. But I mean, I want to keep these so I have more purchasing power in the future because there's other expensive stuff. So I'll just go on ahead and use this technique, choose a card. And place it in my hand. I'll just go ahead and use this. And now this was a technique that did not have a plus, so my turn is over. I draw back up, and I got some more junk. All right, and then this got cheaper. Jen's turn. What's she gonna hit me with this time? Well, she has several techniques. I first of all, I think she'll do some more rotten food to put another junk in my deck, and then that's gone. But it has a plus, so she can keep going. Now she can do the nooses. So she'll do that. Although, again, if she does this, she's throwing away four purchasing power, but she's still got six total, so she's fine. Take one random card from any other player's hand and place it in your hand, and then give them a card back. Although, ah, Jen doesn't have any more junk in her hand. She's getting rid of junk so fast. If she does this, and she might end up taking a, a junk card from me, because she knows I've got a lot of junk, and then she wouldn't be able to give a junk card back. So I don't think she is going to hit me with a nuisance. She, at least she doesn't want to hit me with a nuisance until she's got some junk in her hand. So, right, so she's not going to do the second technique. Now, this is interesting. Jen could use this as a technique to swap her discard pile, which currently contains rotten food, with her draw pile. So that means she knows next turn she'll be guaranteed to draw some more rotten food. So I think she's going to do that. She's going to do this technique. Um, and right, so 
that means it goes in the discard pile. Or no, it doesn't go in the discard pile. She's using this. And so that means here's her draw pile. Here's her discard pile. She's going to swap them. This is now her discard pile. This is her draw pile. She reshuffles it. And so now she knows next turn she's guaranteed to do some more rotten food to get rid of some more junk. And now, after it's done, this goes to the discard pile. And now she can do another technique and it will, or no, I'm sorry, another action, which she'll buy something. She's got a total of nine to spend if she wants to. And she'll go ahead and take the last raccoon card, which costs six, which means she's going to have to give up both of these cards and she won't get changed, but she gets some sabotage. And now she draws, and hey, there's that rotten food. And so now she can shuffle her deck back up. How many junk? How much junk she still have? So she's still got one, two, three. She's still got some junk in her trunk. Okay. So she shuffles this back up. She's got to draw back up to five. And so as you can see, Jen's going the very aggressive raccoon. So you're getting to see, you know, different sides of this game. Ba ba ba. Three, four, five. Okay, and she did get the junk that she's going to try and dump on me. All right. So that was her turn. Everything got cheaper. Oh shoot, everything's gotten cheaper for a while. I just keep forgetting to make everything cheaper. All right, my turn. So what do I got here? Now, I've got this restock. This is a nice card. It lets me wipe the deck. And But I am going to continue building my market stall. Remember, the first stack had to have a value of one. The second stack has a value of two. I am... I'm 20% of the way. I've got to build eight stalls. I've just built my second stall. Next one has to have a total combined value of three, which I can't achieve right now. Um, and also, my, my turn is over. And although I'm hoping I might be able to get, uh, hopefully I'll be able to build this next turn because then that could be my level three instead of using a short power. But anyway, so I'm going to draw back up. And I got some more junk. Not surprising. I got a lot of junk. All right, so Jen's turn. So, first of all, I think there's going to be some more rotten food. Oh, I'm just getting some bad indigestion. Place a card. So Jen just gave me, not surprisingly, some more junk. All right. And now, so Jen's still got five, uh, six, seven, eight. She can pour anything she wants, but I'm thinking she's thinking it might be time to start building her own stall. Um, Although, before she does that, she will cause a bad paint job, which is another technique. She's training her techniques. All her players have to randomly discard one. So I've got to discard one card randomly. And I ended up discarding, not surprisingly, a junk. Jen's giving me so much junk, I, I, she keeps making me discard it. And so that was her second technique. She could now do another technique, sabotage, draw two cards from another player's hand, another player's deck, place one in the discard, and throw the other away. Wow. Although, if Jen does this, after she's all done, she'll only have one. Well, okay, yeah, she's going to do it. She's going to sabotage me again. Draws two cards from my deck. <laughs> well, that didn't work out very well. One of them goes to my discard pile. I guess she'll put this junk. And the other one gets thrown away. So, hey, Jen actually helped me weed my own deck out. And so that's done. And now, that was three techniques in a row, but she, everyone had a plus. So now, at the end of Jen's turn, all she's got is her loyal panda. Now, this has a value of two. But she can't afford anything. It needs three to buy this chest, three to buy that. So Jen's last action, because she had a plus, she's going to build her first stall as well. And she's given up her panda power. All right. And so at the end of her turn, her hand is empty. One, two, three, four, five. Back to me. And you know, you can see Jen's hitting me hard, but it's not really slowing me down. The uh, Even though this, if you play with the, what do you call them, the... The raccoons, I mean, they, they let you hit your opponent a lot, but if you're spending all your time hitting your opponent, you're not doing what you need to do of, you know, building your own market necessarily. Anyway, so it's my turn. I got a lot of money and some junk, unfortunately. I, I'm going to buy this prepaid food, which cost me three bucks. I will spend four. And by the way, unfortunately, you cannot, if I want, I, I can't like say, hey, you know what? I'm going to spend six bucks to buy this thing because that would be a way to weed out the stuff that's in your hand. You have to, you, I mean, you, you, you can overpay, but you can't like, you know, blatantly overpay. So I can't pay six bucks for this. I'm going to pay four, which means my acorn goes away to get this. It goes in my hand. And so now I've got a level three that I could build my level three. Anyway, and all this stuff gets cheaper. I draw back up to five. All right. And some more junk, not surprisingly. Okay, Jen's turn. Boo. So now she could be a nuisance um, and get rid of some junk of her own and maybe get take something from me. And she can draw three cards from the market deck, place one in her hand and throw two away. Um, yeah, well, okay, Jen's going to be a nuisance. All right, so she draws one random card from my hand and she's hoping not to draw junk. So she's going to draw one random card and she's hoping to get one of my good cards because I do have good cards too. 
even though she's giving me all that junk. And let's see, she draws, oh, I'm unhappy. She just stole my essential purchase, which is a four value. And um, now she'll give me something. Oh, I wonder what she'll give me. She'll give me some more junk. All right, that was quite the nuisance. Okay, and, and it had a plus, so Jen can keep going. And now she's got this in her hand. But I think Jen will do another technique. She's going to use her special offer. Let her draw three cards from the market deck, place one in her hand, and throw two away. So, and then you'll notice this technique, there's no plus, so this is going to be the end of her turn. So she gets to draw three, one, two, three, keep one, and, just, and, ta and throw away, which means trash the other two, effectively. Uh, let's see here. Mm. She could go for some more rotten food, but she's really getting to the point where she's running out of stuff to give me. So I don't think she wants that. And, um, you know, this acorn could come in handy later to get something out of my deck to help her build her own, or out of my stall to get to build her own stall. So I think she's actually going to take the acorn. She's, uh, yeah, she's, all right. And so these basically get trashed. And so that was her turn. And then she's got to draw back up to five. Boop. And hey, there's her wily fellow. Okay, back to me. I'm the only, all right, so. Hey, look at all this junk I've got. Great. Although, you know, it's not the end of the world. Remember, my squirrel, it, mm, that's actually really interesting. I think this turn, I am going to use my prepaid goods. I'm going to build my third level. I've got one, two, three. I need four, five, six, seven, and eight, and I'm done. So, and now, boy, it would be awesome. It would be so awesome if I were to draw my squirrel right now. I didn't. I drew my raccoon. Is my squirrel in my discard pile? Actually, I think it probably is, isn't it? Uh, yes, it is. Arg. Okay. But this is the interesting thing. I might want to spend some time, because remember, I can, disc I can basically pass on a turn to discard cards, because I'd like, if I could get my squirrel, I could use my squirrel plus three of these to build my level four, and I'd get rid of a bunch of junk all at once. So that's pretty handy. But anyway, that was my turn. I built my level three. Jen's turn. She's only built her level one so far. And so what is she going to do? Now, she can't build her level two, because remember, you have to match all the same color. So, <clears throat> oh, actually, she could. She, could, she has her squirrel in her hand, her squirrel plus one junk. This has a total value of two, and that could be her level two. And since she doesn't have much junk to get rid of, I think that's what she's going to do. She's going to use her squirrel, and she has built, again, a total combined. Normally, when you, build, when you combine cards to build, they have to be the same color, but the squirrel swaps power. You can stack this card with junk to play in your stall. So Jen has built her level two. All right. And so then she draws back up. Bip. Bop. And my turn. Okay, now that's really interesting as well. Because remember, I've got an acorn, although right now it's discarded, so I don't have access to it. But I could use this acorn to get Jen's squirrel, and then I could combine Jen's squirrel with my junk to build another level. And this would be a great way to get rid of all that, to use all that junk Jen's been shoving down my throat to help me build. I'm definitely going to use my acorn later to pull this squirrel out. That's going to be awesome. But in the meantime, I've got a decision right now. Do I want, let's see, well, I've got five bucks, so I think I'm going to want to buy something. But it'd be great to get that squirrel and get rid of some of this stuff too. But what am I going to do right now? Well, you know what? I think what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to stop. Because I think you guys have a basic idea of how the flow of the game works. You're building your deck up, but you're also daring, tearing your deck apart. And if you'd like to watch a little more, you can hit the eye up in the top right corner of the screen. And I'll see if I could actually finish a full game of this. I'm not promising anything, but I'll try and play through a full game so you can get a sense of how the game continues to escalate as you start to build the levels four, five, six, seven. And you know, building those level eight stacks can be really tricky. So if you'd like to see that, you can hit the eye, go to the extended playthrough, or alternatively, you can hit the other button and go straight to final thoughts. Your choice in five, four, three, two, one.